And welcome once again to In Retrospection, the show where we review the retro today. I am Joshua Caleb, and today I am joined, as always, by Graham Ellis. Hi, everybody. And also I have a special guest, um, Ben Hansen of Game Informer fame. Hello, thanks for having me. Oh, great to have you on. It's always nice to have new guests. Indeed. So what episode is this? What number are we on here? Is this, say, either 33 or 34? Oh, wow. Congratulations. Sorry, yeah. I haven't got it before. <laughs> yeah, I've been going going for a little while. I had to take a break when I was getting my internet fixed. But do, doing pretty good. I've been changing up the formula here and there. Um, this month, we've actually been doing all playthroughs. Normally, we sort of alternate between showing off some games and then actually playing some games. But with the holidays, it's easier to play games. <laughs> so, what have been some of the big games you've done in the past? Uh, lots. We've done all Mario, Zeldas, we've done Kirby's, we've done Metroid's, we've done Arcade's. Donkey Kong's. Donkey Kong's. Yeah. What kind we of arcade did. stuff? Uh, what have we done? We've done like the Monaco, um... RoboCop, Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah, we went through our favorite arcade games there for one week. Nice. Now, Galaga. That uh, very, very old Star Wars game with the uh, Vectors. The Vectors. Yeah, exactly. That was awesome. that was my favorite. Okay, <laughs> that was my, cool. my yeah, choice. <laughs> yeah, it was a great game. I love that one. Definitely. So here we're checking out Link's Awakening DX. It looks like. Yep, I, I, I've only played the DX version, and it's a little easier to see with the full-color rendering and stuff. Yeah, for sure. This is the one I just played through. Uh, like, I played a little bit of this game way back in the day, the original version. Uh, a good friend of mine had it, and then I really didn't pick it up again until, I don't know when that was, maybe like three, four months ago. And I decided to play through the entire thing, and I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, I know, because last week we were playing through Super Mario Land and sort of going through how impressive that was that, that you had Super Mario on a freaking Game Boy back in the day. And now Even here though, we have... As much as I love Mario Land, I played a lot of that one as well. Uh, yeah. It's a weird freaking game, especially like those weird insects that make that crazy hum as they jump. That, that the first one or the, the second one? I'm talking about the first one, but okay, the second yeah. one I was going to say is where it really feels like a Mario game. The second one is amazing. Yeah, I love the second one. The first one it is definitely... <laughs> it, it was a tech demo for them to say that we have Mario on a freaking handheld. Um, yeah, it's night and day difference between the uh, technical ability of the programmers. You could see that they had really matured by that time they came up with the second version. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, I don't know if you guys have iPhones or if you're you know, big fans of the App Store, but there's a platformer for the iPhone called One Bit Ninja. Okay. Which is a really unique uh, homage to the original Super Mario Land. Uh, hmm. It kind of has that, you know, it has like green and black Game Boy colors. Uh, it's similar looking enemies, similar sound effects, and then it kind of has the Super Paper Mario twist where you can change the perspective. Huh. Ah. It's really cool, and for a buck, you can't really go wrong. So that's a good recommendation for y'all. Indeed. I so love these One games. bit ninja. Well, the one one thing in interesting that I've noticed with Nintendo and their early handheld games was that they almost seemed like they were parodies of themselves, especially this one. It's yeah, like... this one I love for a number of reasons. I love the town, I love the people in it, um, and I know like. We did a whole video on the site about this game, and I went into the history of development a little bit there, but uh, it's interesting to read interviews with them, because they even say, you know, the creators of this game say they felt like they were making a parody of a Zelda game. Yeah, and they did it in their off the time. Hours. Yeah, they, they weren't even doing it on company time. It was just sort of a thing that they all got together after work and they said, hey, why don't we make this Zelda-like game with, you know, the Game Boy and see, what, yeah, see where and that goes. Yeah, they whipped out this masterpiece. Uh, this is my favorite bit coming up here and the music kicks in. Oh, yeah, this has some amazing music. Oh, the owl has to ruin it. Oh. 
Uh, good old, uh, what's his that, name? That's what owls do. <laughs> Kebora Gebora. He's, a, he's actually the only recurring character. Well, because... Uh, that's a link? Yeah, well, actually not recurring, because um, Ocarina of Time came would have come after this. Right, right. But, yeah. And I remember there was a lot of speculation early on. Uh, I think Nintendo released a video or maybe even a screenshot. Hang on a second. Got to listen to this. The first spin here. Coming up. Alright. Oh man, it's so satisfying. Alright. Um, but Nintendo released an image of Skyward Sword, and it had a giant whale in the sky that you fought. And there's a lot of speculation that it was the wind pitch from this game. Huh. Uh, and I was but really, see... really excited for it. So, Phil Kohler did the review for Skyward Sword for Game Informer. And every once in a while, I just have to ask him, like, Hey, have you gotten to that wind fish yet? He's like, No, not yet, not yet. And he finally made it to it, and then he told me that it wasn't in fact the wind fish. The giant whale in the I was gonna sky. say because the wind fish is actually good. What, what did you say in Skyward Sword? It was a what? It's uh, it's a boss, I guess. There's like a, there's a giant flying whale in Skyward oh, Sword, huh. but it isn't the wind fish, which is bizarre. Like I don't know why they wouldn't just throw that. Cool yeah, that, that would have been, been. That would have been a good, you know, a parody within itself, right? Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> well, Link's fish. Awakening is a parody unto itself, and right. Yeah. right. And the wind fish may be the dumbest looking thing on the planet. I would put it <laughs> just behind the spirit of the forest in Princess Mononoke. Oh, okay. <laughs> the dumbest looking thing ever created. Yeah, it is, it, that is something... It is something to behold. Especially on the color. <laughs> Did you guys like the Skyward Sword yet? I just started it. Okay, how far are you? Uh, I've been so busy I haven't been able to get very far. So I... Yeah. Just got to the part where I got the sword and the equipment, and then I'm about to go save the princess, kind of thing. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, now, I have you played it. Based out of the loot? No, no, and uh, I'm in uh, way out in eastern Canada. Oh, awesome. Yeah, where it's snowing right now, and I got about three inches of snow on my deck. Oh, <laughs> that sounds lovely. I'm jealous, actually. All the snow melted that we just got here in Minnesota. No, I, would, I wouldn't go skiing yet, but uh, it certainly uh, has made everything look very wintry and Christmassy. Ah, oh, I'm glad I got the Christmas lights up a couple of days ago. <laughs> <laughs> or my wife is, anyway, so I'm particularly happy about Christmas lights. <laughs> and then, Josh, you're in northern Minnesota, but not quite Duluth, is that right? Yeah, and it's in a small little town. What's it called? North Branch. Sort of. Okay. Sort of out in the middle of nowhere. Ah, sorry, I just assume when someone says northern Minnesota, they just mean loot. <laughs> I didn't know there were other things up there. <laughs> yeah, we got a few other things. Oh yeah, this was the this was like the only Zelda game that had power ups. Yeah, which is kind of weird. I don't like them because they change the music, and the music isn't nearly as good as what it normally is. So I would always yeah. It. And it's like when you change the scenes, it would go back to the default music so you never knew if the power if your power was still going right, right. or not hmm. okay yeah this is this is the part that stumped me for a bit when it's I it's remarkably played. tricky like to start off the game with this weird puzzle we have to go for the potion on a stupid raccoon which is I guess a Mario reference yeah supposedly he kind of looks like Mario which I can kind of see yeah, and then he mentioned something about eating toadstools. And oh he yeah. So where where is he? Cause he <laughs> now I can't find him. Oh, I think he's in kind of more of the left, like the upper left. Yeah, cause he does something to the forest or something, so you can't find the key you need or something. I forget what it is exactly. Is he? That's the entrance. Maybe I need to go left here and then go. Or maybe, maybe it's this cave. Yeah, let's try the cave. Watch out now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh. No! Oh. 
the, the, the slipping and sliding. <laughs> So Dan Reichert still, Dan Reichert from Game Informer still argues that this is the weakest Zelda game. Nah, I don't know. I think he's nuts. It's my personal favorite, and I don't know if it's just like an ounce of nostalgia that's tainting my mind or what, but I love it. So cool, <laughs> Yeah, I think this is a pretty awesome one. I mean, I, I would, I argue that I've been playing Spirit Tracks on the DS. Mm-hmm. That is the most annoying Zelda game I have ever played. It's pretty annoying, but that overworld theme is so freaking good. Yeah, but the the train riding, yeah. hate, I hate the train. Yeah, yeah. Here's the mushroom. Though I will concede there are some bizarre and and minor annoyances about this. Oh yeah, for sure. Like Dan's main problem, I think you mentioned it in that video uh, that we put up on the site, was just how if you talk to or like press a next to one of like those blocks or like the skulls oh i don't think you even have to press a i think if you just go up to one yeah, it says is. oh my this is too heavy and it's like yeah and it just, it's like three or four yeah. screens that i was like all right all right all yeah right. it's like you just have to touch it you don't even have to press yeah. a you just touch it and yeah it's like that's pretty annoying and especially or when pots when you're going around houses you know the yeah. pots yeah, anybody who says the original Zelda is better than this is absolutely insane. Because we played through all that game on a Super replay. Yeah. <laughs> and I was bored out of my freaking mind. That game drove me nuts. And, like, I don't I even know how... It's an important game. Like, I don't even mind that we gave it the number one slot in our top 200 games. But playing through that now, like, first of all, it's impossible unless you have a walkthrough. Even with a walkthrough, it's just flat out annoying. I know. I am, I am actually surprised you were able to even finish it. Without going yeah, we're insane. Like we're planning on it being three episodes. It ended up being ten. <laughs> oh, wow. It was brutal. See, yeah. I, I could probably play through Donkey Kong Country in like three episodes or something. Because I think when we, when <laughs> we did... He is really good at that. Yeah, when oh. we did the replay through <laughs> of the Donkey Kong Country, yeah. I think I got through like the first three or four worlds in an hour. Holy cow. Yeah, he was flying. I mean, just... I, I spent 50 lives on that stupid minecart the first time I played it. Well, you gotta know the <laughs> shortcut. He just went right through it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I've played that game on every conceivable handheld it's ever been released on. I was a big fan of Donkey Kong Country 2. Or is it Donkey Kong Land on the Game Boy? Is it called different? Yeah, I played that one too. Okay, yeah, I, I played a lot of that one. Is it, is it named differently on the handheld? There's Donkey Kong Land, which is a different game. Okay. On the original Game Boy, and then there's Donkey Kong Country on the Game Boy Color, which okay. is Donkey Kong Country. Okay, cool. Okay, now this lady always threw me off. Whenever I came here, I thought that was a dungeon door. Because yeah, it looks it, looks like, it, it sure. looks like the one from the first Legend of Zelda. Yep. The spooky tree thing. <laughs> but it's actually this witch lady, which I need to give her... Have to yeah, give her a, a complicated quest here. Ah, it has the sleepy toads to it does. <laughs> what is it with so this? Oh, sorry, was this available on the uh, Wii uh, Virtual Console as well? No, the 3DS Virtual Console. Yep. Oh, it's on the 3DS. Ah. Yeah, you you can't get um handheld games on the Wii Virtual Console, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a shame. They should have some weird Super Game Boy, you know, way of playing it on there. Well, yeah. I mean, you should be able to do it with the Wii Mode. I mean, not necessarily flinging around, but there's enough buttons. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. a D-pad and two buttons. And... Yeah, four, well, four even <laughs> for some of the Super Nintendos, I guess. Oh, yeah, here here's the thing. I don't know if I ever, if Dan ever saw this. He got a kick out of doing this on Link to the Past. Uh-huh. <laughs> like that stupid face? And that does the same thing, just minus the mustache from Link uh, to the Past. Yeah, All the other enemies I've tried, it just burns them. Oh, man. Which I suppose yeah, is effective. Cool. I can't fault the game for letting us start enemies on fire. No. Okay, so, now yeah, I, I actually, I played through this game, I played it a couple months ago on, uh, it was a ROM, and I played it on a modded Xbox, 
Oh yeah. I'm kind of embarrassed to say, but you know, I bought the game, so it's totally legal, right? This is yeah. Back up. Uh, yeah, that's it's covered under the DCMA. Yeah. yeah. For now. But yeah. But for it, now. It looked amazing <laughs> playing on the full screen. It was absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. I have. Looked, that's how I played a lot of these games. Is on the on the Xbox. Uh, Emulator disc. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. We were, you were talking about that yesterday a little bit. Yeah, it's it's a fantastic way to play it. So yeah. Cool as it may be. Oh wait, I think I know where the record De is. Depending on your locale in the world. That's right. <laughs> um, it was really fun too because I started playing it and there's ten save slots on the Xbox. Mm-hmm. Um, ah. So like when a really cool moment would happen, I would just save it so I could go back to watch it at some point. And then after I've been playing for I think only like two hours. Hang on, I'll let you talk to the tracker. I guess he gives you a clue that his nose is very sensitive. See, that that's also what threw me off. He, he says his nose is very sensitive, and when you get the mushroom, if you activate the mushroom, it says you hold it up and a gentle aroma wafts through your nostrils. Oh, so gotcha. I kept trying to hold the mushroom up to the raccoon, trying to get it to do something. I'm guessing 30% of players never got past this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, because he... It is weird, you gotta sprinkle magic powder on him, not... Uh, otherwise, you keep trying to avoid him, he just screws the forest up for you so you can't go on. Yeah, yeah. Wah! Hey, he turns into, it's a me, a Miriam. <laughs> Big juicy toadstool. I don't think Mario would say John, but... <laughs> yeah, but, but see, Mario d does turn into a raccoon. Right, right. So... He does look an awful lot like Mario. <laughs> now we get Mario, the key. Yeah, it was funny. Like uh, they have Kirby in this game later on, and in the Iwata asks where they're talking to the original creators. Like Iwata even asks them, like, did you guys get permission from Hal Laboratories to use Kirby in this game? They're like, I don't <laughs> think so. I think we just put them in there for fun. Yeah, they're they're in the in the village. There was that um, chain chomp yep. thing they call a bow wow. Which you actually get as a kind of somewhat item to use in the environment, which is pretty cool. Like yeah, you yeah. Flowers you... to get to the first or second dungeon. Yeah, you get to take it for a walk, mm -hmm. and then you can eat all the flowers in the swamp and get to, to the dungeon. Right. But what I was saying about uh, playing this game on the Xbox is, like, I was playing it for a couple of hours, and then the talk came up in the office of doing Skyward Sword as a cover. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of debate. Uh, we had like a couple options, um, and we kind of Nintendo was being a little bit stingy as they usually are. Yeah, uh, but Nintendo. I was really pushing for it just because I wanted to do like a full Zelda perspective as far as video goes, because I could just capture it straight from that Xbox. I knew it would look really good. Yeah. So like that, that Link's Awakening video that we ended up putting up was kind of like the first big thing. That was my main argument as to why we should do Skyward Sword <laughs> the story. Yeah, this. I, this is definitely a incredible game. Yoshi. Oh yeah, and there's Yoshi. They say something like he seems to be popping up in games everywhere these days, or something when you get him. Yeah, I think they, they, they even they call it a Yoshi doll. Yep. And then, is there a shop around here? The north. There, there yeah, there's a shop. You gotta steal. You have to steal. Oh yeah, you can grab the shovel and then walk out. You just can never come back in. Go to the upper right and have them look up there and then try and run out in time. Really tough though. Put it back. Just right, he'll keep looking up. He keep no. Nope, nope. Like the second he looks straight north, just break for Oh, oh I get it. Nope. Ah, ah holy tough. just gotcha. Yeah, you just need to get that step no, around no, 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 no. it. Ha ha. Yeah. ha ha. Guess what? You got it for free. <laughs> Are you proud of yourself? Proud of yourself. Go back in. It's being so moralistic. I love oh. it. It becomes Dragon Ball Z at this point. Now you'll pay the ultimate price. Ah! <laughs> Hadouken! <laughs> and I'm dead. <laughs> Did you save? Okay. Oh, now he has a bow? What is that? For 980. I didn't... So do I still have the shovel? Good question. Yep, I do. Yeah, you should. <laughs> From now on, your name is Thief, which is the coolest part. Oh, yeah. 
So even like Marin will call you thief. Pa 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 pao. Whatever. I love this little line here. Did you guys read that one? What? What he said? Yeah. He's like, oh, we lost in the woods later, so you have to come and find me. <laughs> <laughs> completely right the fourth one. Lost in the hills later. Please come and look out for me. <laughs> yeah, keep a look out for me. Uh, it's like you're writing the dialogue and it's like, F it. Let's just put it in there. Well, yeah, I often wonder, like, how much leeway the translation from the Japanese to the English gets done here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I have heard with some games that when they have to do the do translating from the Japanese to English, they often have to completely rewrite everything. Because, oh, yeah, like, like, the jokes and humor and stuff is totally different that the U.S. just would not get. Yeah, like, I know in Chrono Trigger they had to do a lot of that because they have those three enemies that are, like, named after, you know, rock stars in the United States. They had to oh, okay. redo that. And then, um... Yeah, so the localization house for Nintendo is called Treehouse, probably Treehouse, um, and they do an awesome job. Like you just look at all of the Mario RPGs, like oh yeah, Mario's especially. Like they're so funny and so uh -huh. well translated. No, oh, that's what so, you sometimes forget that they were in a different language to start with. That's yeah, that's how good it is. Right, and I'm sure some of those jokes they had to completely rework because they just seemed too on point, you know. Yeah, you never see uh, Mario say, uh, somebody set us up the bomb, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hang on, I couldn't help but notice you're Canadian and you call it Mario, huh? I, I call it Mario because Mario is a friend of mine. <laughs> uh -huh. I actually have a co-worker called Mario. And oh. that's how they pronounce his name. It's so Ow. weird that in Canada, Mario is Mario. Why? Is that a French thing? That it's a French thing. Okay. <laughs> Because he's uh, Mario is French. Ah. We call him Super Mario, and, and nobody calls him Mario. Does that sound yeah. weird? Like if I went up, yeah, it does. It does sound weird. They, they call him Mario. <laughs> All right. Just, just me. So just ignore me. <laughs> you know, I, I say a boot. <laughs> you know. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, apparently Minnesotans do have an accent. I have, I have never noticed, but then I've oh, lived here. There are here. tons of accents within the U.S. Some are just subtler than others. The big okay. thing in Minnesota that people always tell me I'm doing incorrectly, like when I go on cover trips and whatnot, uh, I was talking to people from around the country, is I guess this is only in Minnesota, and it drives a lot of people nuts, is we'll say, like, can I borrow this thing to you, or can I borrow this from you instead of lend? Yeah, that's we do that too. Really, in our vocabulary, for some reason, it's always like, "Oh, can I borrow that from you?" And I guess people are just disgusted by that. <laughs> that's okay. what we've always said here. Oh, in Canada, you guys are borrow as well. Yeah, we borrow, or uh, uh, we put things out to unthaw. Okay, exactly. Oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? You know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the I'm not freezing something when I put it out on the counter. I'm thawing it. But we put it out to unthaw. Right, exactly. <laughs> but there's regional stuff like that. We have the same, even within the province here, we get the, up north, they say, use guys a lot. Ooh, that's good. Mm, use guys. And then when I go to... I've been to Montreal a couple times now for cover stories, and all of their curse words in Montreal are based on uh, the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. So, like, one of their major curse words is tabernacle. Yep. And then chalice is another one, which is really cool. Yeah, there, there's some others. <laughs> <laughs> I, I live in uh, the bilingual province in Canada, New Brunswick. Ah. And uh, so we have very, uh, Acadian, large Acadian areas. And uh, they can swear really differently. Huh. Well, feel free to say them because you know oh. you we need to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, uh, I don't, I just don't. <laughs> okay. I get it wrong. I, my French is really poor and bilingual, so I can only speak. I don't even have to worry about it. I can speak English and he can speak French. We just need the guy in the government to understand both of us. <laughs> um, but ah. yeah, and besides, half of them speak what they would call shidik. Which is a combination of French and English, and it's spoken so fast, neither one of us can understand it. 
Huh, it's kind of like Spanglish. Yeah, <laughs> pretty close. Are you looking for the dungeon here, Josh? Yeah, I'm... T <laughs> I cannot for the life of me remember where the tail cave is. It's a little bit tricky. You gotta go to the left. And then you gotta get up where those guys are up there, I think. You can also look at the map here. Oh, yeah, that's right. This does have a map. Yeah. So, go up. Not quite there. So, where you are right now, I think it's in the upper right. Upper right of quadrant from where you are. Okay, yeah, I remember it being some kind of somewhere in the beach On the area. upper level of the cliff, so we might have to go here and then go up a... There we go. And then just keep heading to the right, I think. Come down. So isn't that back to where I was? Yep, you're right. That was dumb. Don't jump down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's hard with these games that go screen by screen. Yep, yep. Okay, Josh, just go ahead and jump down here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wasn't I already down there? <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, you gotta wrap around. Okay, this is where I missed it. And remember, this is another thing that drives Dan Reichert insane, is just how maze-like the overworld is. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, you're, and, you're, and the map isn't exactly real helpful. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a more detailed version of it. Especially when you can't see everything unless you've actually been to that exact square. Right. It is amazing that, uh, was it? Ah. Whose island is an exact square? Perfect. <laughs> okay, now here is one thing that I love about this game that utterly annoys me about Link to the Past. What's that? The dungeon music. I am kind of a big music aficionado, at least for video games. And it annoys me that at Link to the Past, every single dungeon has the same music. I mean, granted, you have the Light World and Dark World themes, right. but they're all the same. And this one varies it up a little bit more? Yeah, every dungeon has a unique theme. I mean, granted, it's 8 bit, but right. Right. at least it's different. That said, as much as I love the music in this game, dungeon music never really flipped my cookies, so to speak. No, I mean, it's, n it's nothing incredible, but... Well, it does show a touch of detail on the programmers. Yeah. The designers, you know, to give each one a theme. so that Cause I always liked in some of the later games how each... Because each dungeon would have sort of a theme to it, and having the music sort of match that theme is always kind of nice. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, that was actually one thing about um, uh, Phantom Hourglass on the DS. Mm -hmm. That every every single dungeon has the same music, which that completely baffled me because that's a DS game. I don't think they should be lacking for storage. Yeah, yeah, very strange. Huh. And this does have some very curious puzzles. Oh, and then this is the what the DX version for the color had added a new dungeon. I don't know where that is. I beat the game and I didn't see it anymore. Yeah, I don't. I, I know it's called the color dungeon. Yeah, and I know you it, get also it, different colored tunics. I didn't see any of that in my playthrough. I don't know how hidden it is. Yeah, I remember playing it. I don't remember where it is. But I do remember it was a very interesting dungeon. Pretty much all the puzzles were based on color. Oh yeah, you have to get the stupid beak for this guy on this one. Yeah. Have you guys um, played Mario 3D Land? No, I have not. No, I have not. Okay, it's really, really good. I just finished it a couple days ago. And they actually have a galaxy, I guess you want to call it, or a world that's modeled after Zelda, so it's like top down. Okay. Yeah, I heard of that. It's really cool, and the torches, if you light all the torches with firewall power, it makes the Zelda chime. <laughs> nice. Oh, the cool. The entrance, by the way, for the uh, color dungeon mm -hmm. is hidden beneath the grave on the Koholint's Island Cemetery. Oh, wow. It oh. can only be found by pushing the gravestones a certain way that's found in the Maid Village Library in a book. Oh, I rem I rem now I remember that. There's this little patch of ground where there's like one gravestone or something. It, it, it's pretty conspicuous. I, I remember that. Yeah, there's the one gravestone off by itself, and it's under that one? Yeah. 
now but you have to find the book first because that tells right. you the instructions on how to do it so there's the that's the key to the puzzle shall we say uh-huh hmm. I kind of want to go back and check out that dungeon so I get the full experience. And then when you beat that dungeon, you get the different colored tunics. Um, see, after you defeat the boss, you meet the fairy queen. Okay. And she gives them a choice of either blue clothes or red clothes. Oh, right, and they each give you special powers. Correct. Defense and attack? Uh, one does half damage, and the other one does double sword damage. Gotcha. So it's like armor versus um, combat, right? Right, but right. you don't know which one is which? I'm um, trying to probably, remember. I do now, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking if they <laughs> gave the time, you... time, you don't. <laughs> I'm trying to remember if there was any clues interspersed, because there was actually some people you could talk to throughout the dungeon. Well, if you just think of the nature of blue and red, and yeah, what I, they mean yeah, to I us, you I would can kind blue. of figure which one's defense and which one's not. Yeah, blue would be defense to me normally, but since the hearts are red in this game, it throws me off. Well, you might be right. Oh, I got the boss key wrong. already. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't want to give it away to you for this way. I, okay. I think you should find it for yourself. All right. I will go or, you can, or you can Google it like I did. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't get your green tunic back. Once you pick the clothes, you're stuck with that. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Ah, the stupid jumping skeletons. I hate those guys. He's jumping around. He's having a good time. Leave him alone. Okay, so I got the done. I got the boss key already. Can you open that door there? Man, it's been too long since I've played this. Hmm. Didn't you pick up enough keys? No, I, I, I probably did this wrong, but I used one of the keys to get the boss key. Oh. But this. I don't, did but, you could let you do it wrong like that. I don't think so because it's not like you can go buy keys. Right, right. Like the yeah, first one. There we go. Ooh, no. Piece of power. Whoopee. Piece of power. Though the cool thing about this one, it does send enemies flying. Yeah, that is pretty sweet. Wait, this, mm -hmm. this is the entrance. Oh, wait. Here we go. There's a key. Yeah, I do oh. love the rock feather in this game, though. Especially when you combine it with the Pegasus boots later on, you can just leap all over the place. Oh, no, oh, no, wait, this isn't what I wanted. This. Oh, yeah, this is what I wanted. The compass on this yeah. game alone, I think, ha tells you if there's a key in the room. There's some, like, special chime or something? There's yeah. Like, uh, treasure chest or something? I think it only I think it only works for keys, but yeah, it, do, it plays a little a little chime. Ooh, the revolving doors. <laughs> Apparently, for no other reason than to have a one-way door. <laughs> well, it's from the old homage, the old movies like uh, they had the hidden one-way doors revolved around. Oh. Ooh. Oh, I have to get them all matching. Ah. Yeah, this is a pain in the ass. Ah. Yeah, without getting hit. Ah. Oh. Oh. Oh, my friend. Get him. Get him. This thing looks so dumb. <laughs> What is it? They remind me so much of Pokemon, you know? <laughs> Just yeah, yeah. That's all like the months. Ah. Slow poke. Oh. Or it looks like a almost looks like a bald Furby. <laughs> <laughs> or a slightly deflated Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember where was Kirby on this? Kirby's in either the second to last or the last dungeon. It's kind of cool, because he can actually suck you in, but he doesn't get the power. Huh. Yeah. Did you guys play the new game? The Dreamland? Mm-hmm. Uh, no. I, <laughs> my funds are rather limited so at the moment, so I haven't been able to pick up many new games. Well, it's pretty good, but it is no Rayman Origins. So that game, if you're looking for a solid duty platformer, cannot be beat. 
Yeah, so so I've seen it. It's also supposed to be like really easy or something. The Kirby game. Uh, it's easy up to a certain point, but then you have to go back and kind of farm uh, the equivalent of stars, and that's when it gets um, really, really tough. Okay, what is the purpose of this room? I don't remember. I think it's safe to leave. Other than to be creepy. It is really dark for the Zelda game. Yeah. It's rotting flesh. Almost could have used that on our Halloween special that we did. Yeah. <laughs> Especially because Link looks like he's a solid four years old in this game. Like, for him to see. Oh, yeah, awesome. yeah, he does. Have I explored this dungeon there? You can just go oh. right up through there, can't you? Oh, whoa. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Buzz, out. buzz, outs, outsiders? Yeah, I love them. And, like, they don't even try and hide what the plot of this game is. Like, every enemy and boss just screams, like, we're in a dream, don't wake us up. Like, they're just completely <laughs> on the nose about it. Uh, also, no, notice. So, Link wakes up in the shower afterwards <laughs> and it's yeah. all a dream? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, spoiler. <laughs> spoiler. <laughs> Well, I think after this point, this game's been up for how many years now? <laughs> oh, came out in 80... no, no 93. I think it's 93. Oh, this one, has, this one has all the cool instruments. Yeah, and I love the song that plays when you actually go up to the windfish's egg and play it. Oh yeah, man. Really cool little uh, tiny tune that like shows all the areas in the game. Oh, that's awesome. Came out in 1998. 98? Oh, wow. the, the DX, DX version? version? Oh, not well, not the Link's Awakening for the uh, Game Boy Color. Sorry. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I oh, think. Sorry. Yeah, the DX version was 98. The uh, original version was 93. Oh wow. As instrument of the sirens. I believe you were real. So, so he thinks that I'm a dream. There's no trust on this island. <laughs> yeah, everyone thinks everyone's a dream. <laughs> That's how I go throughout my day. Safer that way. Kabonga uh, Swamp. This, this, is it, this is the one where you have to get the Bow Wow and... Yep. So you go yeah. back to the village and they all start freaking out. Like, especially that one lady, like, someone stole my bow wow. <laughs> so this game supported, originally supported the Game Boy Color printer. Remember that? Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because the Game Boy camera was a favorite of mine. It's all those little peripherals that, you know, uh, we talked about last night when we were doing the uh, random retro show. Right. Uh, how they a lot of companies produce these orphan peripherals. Call them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they come up with a, it's a great peripheral, but for only one make game, one, maybe two games for it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys remember with Pokemon Snap where you could bring in your cartridge to like a blockbuster and they would print off? I still have the cartridge reader. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I still have the cartridge reader. Ooh, yeah, Mini Bow Wow. That's, that's one of my favorite games. Yeah, my kids enjoyed that. They were into the Pokemon. Uh, it's still are to some degree. They still play the uh, Emerald and the uh, some of the, quote, crystal ones of the older ones now. But... Sure, sure. I still haven't gotten through the remake of Silver, and that's one of my favorite games of all time. I mean, so I bought it for DS, played it for an hour, and I was like, eh, I've done this intro to Pokemon so many times. I could never get into Pokemon. Oh, so good. I, I tried it, and I couldn't get past the fact that I would say, attack with Fireball, my little Pokemon would shake, and then the other guy would shake, and it would say, did so much damage. Reminded <laughs> me of Final Fantasy. Oh, you got an RPG. Yeah, <laughs> no, no kidding. <laughs> I actually like Yu-Gi-Oh, the Yu-Gi-Oh game, because I found it a little more challenging with the cards. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm building your deck and figuring out but uh, that was more of my thing yeah I watched that show too I liked it a lot <laughs> for like the crazy intro that show had did you guys watch the show as well yeah oh yeah we watched the show here too <laughs> they had like that wicked bass line mm -hmm. that was the coolest part of the intro but it was the rest of the show <laughs> 
No, and it probably wasn't. Well, they, they do weird things in anime music, so you know. <laughs> yeah. True. They do weird things to anime. <laughs> uh, anime true. Is weird. Yeah, they do like to re envision. <laughs> and it's third season of Digimon, they completely re-envisioned re that show and gave it like this weird dark edge, which was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But it's still just bizarre that they were that willing to radically change the show. And I'm guessing a lot of people would want them to do it to Pokemon. Just like, come out with yeah. a darker version of Pokemon. Well, Zoids is the same way. There's so many different visions of Zoids. And yeah, yeah. you got to remember there's sole purpose for these cartoons, for all intents and purposes, is to sell a product. Right. Something you're not allowed to do under American television laws. Mm -hmm. um, Japanese have no qualms about it. <laughs> These are big half-hour ads. <laughs> and it works so well. And it does. <laughs> because okay. they do at least make a show out of it. I mean, there's characters, there's a plot to some degree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pokemon is one of the most genius videos of all time. Yeah, exactly. It's a group, you know. It's a great little show for uh, Mr. Ash to run around and meet new Pokemon trainers. But actually, I have company arriving in a couple minutes here, so I should probably get going if you want to wrap this up soon. All right. Um, I, I have no idea where the swamp. I forgot where the swamp is. Oh, you ever was? I think it's in the. Think, oh wait, I think I'm in the right right track now. Yeah, I think it's right over here. Is that a telephone? Yes, that is a yeah. telephone. I get to talk to a guy in a shack that ha also has a telephone. He'll tell you what to do. But this I can't go talk to him in person. Like so much. Oh, so he's your uh, help. Yeah, yep. he, he's the hint guy. He's the hint guy. Okay. But you can't go talk to him in person. If you, if you tell him <laughs> to go talk, if you talk to him in person, he says go outside and use the phone. Yeah. Don't you need Bow Wow before you can get in here? That's what I was, yeah, where is Bow Wow? I don't know. Also, how do you dog nap a ball and chain? <laughs> <laughs> One of life's great mysteries. Bow Wow is a great character, though. Love him. I prefer the name <laughs> Bow Wow to Chain Chomp. <laughs> yeah. Alright, All right, so... Well, I'll probably get going here, guys. Alright. Yeah. We, we won't keep it, Ben. Alright, All right, well, thanks for being on. on. Nice meeting you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. And uh, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's a month late, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just stay in touch. Okay. All right, you guys have fun. You, you too. too. Right, see, ya. see ya. So we'll find a place to save. Yep. Oh, there's Dr. Wright from the um, Sim City on the Super Nintendo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The only thing I don't like about my hobby is that I never receive a response. Well, do you mail it, or do you just write? <laughs> well, he's not Dr. Mail. True. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we cut this episode short, being it's the holidays and yeah, well, we have stuff not? to do? And uh, with, uh, we we'll can always uh, pick it off again next week. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop here at the telephone. I suppose you go in. That kid said if I go into a building, it'll start my save from there. It's ringing. You... You... Lyra? You'll re... re You'll re I don't know. Okay. Alright, well... Um, if you want to watch more of these shows, you can check them out at RetroGamesForever.com or you can follow me on Twitter at JoshuaCaleb75. Um, you can find Ben, of course, at Game Informer, and he is on Twitter at Yozetti. Never did ask him what that stood for. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's different. Yeah. And you're on the Twitters too, Graham. Mm-hmm. I am smoke me underscore a kipper. Uh, Red Dwarf fans would know the reference to that. New, se new season coming up for Red Dwarf. We're excited about it. I've Off never topic, seen but... Red Dwarf. Uh, it's a comedy science fiction show from England. 
It's gone eight seasons. Um, it's 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 funny. I, I I've always liked it. Even my wife liked it. <laughs> but, you know, if if she can handle the geek, it, it it's good. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Then they're hitting all audiences. Yes, they are. All right. And, well. Uh, I was going to say just a happy Thanksgiving again to everybody. Um, yep. Hope they have a good, safe holidays and uh, safe Black Friday too. Don't. Oh yeah. Don't just get don't trampled. Dress warmly when you're standing out there at four in the morning, waiting for the sh store to open with the lines. And wear body armor. And don't tickle me Elmo anybody. <laughs> no, that would be bad. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching, and we will see you next week in the past as soon as I answer this phone.